I want to show you the perfect post that came up on LinkedIn and why this is an awesome opportunity for you to jump on if you're a junior admin or a junior developer. So this popped up on my LinkedIn feed yesterday and the reason it's so great is because right now in the industry what we're seeing a lot of is that in the junior admin roles, not all of them, but in a lot of them, people are expecting you to have three to four years experience. It's not just in Salesforce, it's like almost any intern job out there. For whatever reason, people think that that's the way you should approach it. And so they're throwing these positions out and it's really like impeding people from getting in. And so in this instance here, it's the complete opposite. They're looking for someone with six to one year experience of either admin or development experience. And they ask for those people to reach out to them. So um, as you can see, obviously this blew up. This almost has 500 likes in a day. And more importantly, 202 comments and 37 shares. So to say that this was uh, not popular would be an understatement, right? This absolutely just blew up on LinkedIn and it does two things for us. One, it shows the strength of people looking for this opportunity. So with this many shares and comments and likes in just one day of somebody posting this, that just shows how many people are trying to get in here, right? So there's this huge need to get in, which is great. It shows that there's still a huge demand in the industry, that they're still wanting people and people are still wanting to get in. But number two, more importantly, if you look at the underside of it and that is you and you're wanting to get in, the most important side here is that there's 202 comments, 37 shares. If we just look at this before I tell you what I'm going to say, we look at these comments on here. Um, I obviously recommended some people uh, that are in our community that have, uh, are at that position ready to go. Um, but there's also all these people, right? Right off the bat, these three people don't know who any of these people are. Well, it looks like two are the same. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing personal or anything like that. I'm literally looking at this for like the second time. These people right here, I would already like disqualify. They don't have a profile picture. They don't have a last name that I can read. Um, so I wouldn't you know, qualify that person. Uh, same thing here, no profile picture. Automatically not interested if I'm gonna have 202 comments on here and I have a pick of the litter, I'm automatically not going to look at any of these people that don't have a profile picture. And there's quite a few, like what I'm already just seeing here. Okay, cool, here's another one. So you're seeing all those, right? And we can keep loading these comments and keep going down. The more important part though, outside of that, that wasn't gonna be my main focus. The second thing is, when I looked at this yesterday, look how many people are actually like trying to be proactive about it. Um, I'm gonna say before I even dive into this that 99% of the people did not do what I would have done. If we look at this, there's, okay, this one here, let's just read the first one. Hi, I'm interested, I just texted you, can you please share my email to get the full job description? Okay, kind of, but what is she doing here? Well, she's being proactive, yes, but the second side of it is she's trying to put more work onto this recruiter. So yeah, okay, you texted them, and then what, you want her to email you specifically? It's the same thing here when there's 202 comments. Um, when you're trying to kind of put more work onto the recruiter that's already trying to fulfill this role, trying to get it done for somebody else, once again, pick of the litter, they're highly, um, it's highly unlikely, I should say, that they're gonna want to do more work in sending a, a specific email to somebody else, right? So when you think in terms of the person posting the job, yes, you can comment, and that's what 99% of the people I'm gonna guess did, but the second side is, how can you make it to where there's the least amount of friction possible for Christina? That's what she wants at the end of the day. To find the perfect candidate, she wants to find somebody that's going to go out of their way, show they're proactive, show they want the job, tell her how she's qualified. So basically all she has to do as the recruiter is take all that information and serve it up to everybody else on a, on a silver platter. That's what she wants to do. And so when you're trying to say, hey, email me or Better yet, when you just say like, can we make a chat or I'm interested, you know, there's a lot of those. I'm interested, 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 thanks for sharing, interested. I mean, look at all these that say interested. Interested, here's another email one, interested, interested, interested. In okay, these are all, look at all those. Interested, 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 interested. What does that do at all for you? That is like the bare minimum, and I would even say even further from the truth, that that's not even worth putting on here. Who cares if you're interested? There's 202 people that commented on this, 
and more importantly, from my own statistics, if you have this many likes, I mean, this is probably close to 50,000 plus people that have seen this, and there's a lot of shares too. So it's probably even north of 50,000 people that saw this. And so there's all these people that didn't comment that may have reached out as well. So saying you're interested, once again, that's like almost pointless to do. She's not going to reach out to you. She's not going to do anything because she's waiting for those one to five people like myself of what I would have done in this situation where you're going to reach out and you're going to do all the work for Christina so that she can just be like, this person did X, Y, Z. This is why they're qualified. They're ready to go. Like we could get an interview today if we needed to. This is how I know they're qualified. So a really easy, easy way to stand out from the crowd, and I say this all the time in my course, I say this all the time to people that need a job, this is 99% of the issue that people mess up on, is they get really, really good and caught up in the technical side of stuff, but then they lack this side of it. Like this is not good soft skills to just get in here and say that you're interested, right? It's not great soft skills to try to market yourself this way. This doesn't help you by doing it this way. So, cool. We kind of <laughs> talked about that one quite a bit. I really nailed on what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't do what 99% of the people did on here, right? What I would have done, okay, if this was me, this is what I would have done. All right, I see this post. It's obviously blown up. There's a lot of people that want it. So that's going to tell me right off the bat that this is going to be possibly a lot of competition for this thing. Well, if I really want the role, I'm going to Christina's profile. All right, cool. I'm on Christina's profile. I'm going to look a little bit before I do anything and just see who Christina is. All right, national recruiter. She's been a retention specialist. Okay, awesome. So you can kind of get a little idea of like where she's coming from. Why I want to look at that first is um, obviously probably figured she was a recruiter, but just wanting to get more of her background. Like what kind of person is she? You know, what kind of role has she worked in? How is she going to be as far as personalities? People that have worked in the recruiting industry for a long time, they've seen a lot of stuff, right? So kind of same thing. They want to get to the point on stuff. They want to get to the place where you're just serving everything up to them on a silver platter here. And so uh, we can kind of see that. So that's cool. The next piece, I would probably just take a second, read through this a little bit, see what she's doing, see what the company's about. Nothing crazy that stands out to me. Okay. And then the last piece I'd want to see too, does she do this often? Um, okay, so here's, oh yeah, yeah, posts. Okay, so she's got a post there. And nothing else really out there. So she liked this one. And I, I'm filtered on posts, so it shouldn't be showing her activity, but it is. Okay, so she reposted this one two months ago, four months ago, four months ago. So this tells me that when there's an opportunity like this, this doesn't come often. So another reason that I'm going to want to capitalize on this quickly. Okay, cool. So we have some background about Christina, who she is, where she works, the idea around the opportunity. Now, who is this job for? She's a national recruiter for tech systems. All right, well, I'm going to go here. And if I do a command click, it brings it up in another tab. What is tech systems? Like, is this before I get so excited about the opportunity, am I even interested in this? Is this something that I qualify for? Do I want to work for tech systems? I don't even know who they are. Okay, so they have a ton of followers. Obviously a really big company with that many followers here on LinkedIn. All right, cool. And then here's what I would do next. I'm going to go to people. Uh, well, before that, let's actually go to jobs. Let's see if they've listed this job. So let's go to junior sales scores. Or just an easier way, let's type in Salesforce, if I can spell. Okay, this is going to bring me up, um, and I'm going to try to look to see if I can find it. Here's a Salesforce developer. I know she said both in there, so let's actually go back to her post. She can do here. And this is what I'd be looking for. Okay, so a junior candidate with six to one year Salesforce admin or development experience. Okay, so that means it could be either or. So I see a Salesforce developer, but I'm not seeing anything right now for a admin. Okay, and there's only two pages, so we might as well. Sales trainee, sales trainee. Easier way to right? you could always just do this. I'm not seeing anything on here. Scrum Master. 
technical recruiter. Yeah, so I don't I don't really see anything. I see that Salesforce developer, and that was the only thing I saw for Salesforce. So what I wanted to ideally do there was apply for the role if I can, right? I want to, once again, I want to do as much of the job that I can for Christina before I even go to her and try to figure it out. So I didn't see it. So if I am an admin, um, and this is in the Netherlands, I don't live in the Netherlands, and it's a hybrid, so, you, so you'd have to be going into the office. So that one obviously does not apply if I'm here in the US. So I don't see the job listed on their website or on their LinkedIn, okay? So we did that. We tried to see if we could apply for it, don't see it. Next place is, sometimes they don't list it there. So let's go to their website. Looks like there's a career tab. Uh, let's see, student, experienced professionals, internal careers. Let's do that. All right. Um, sometimes I usually have just like a place that you can search. This is kind of annoying, to be honest. Finding this is usually a little quicker. Okay, here we go. So, got to it. I'm going to type in Salesforce again. I don't want to get too crazy and not find it. So, I just like to type Salesforce. And it looks like the same stuff we just looked at. Sales trainee for a lot of this. So, what I'm finding out is maybe it's for that sales trainee stuff. I don't know. Because there's a lot of those popping up. I don't think it is. Let's read one of them. We accelerate the business. Blah, blah. Yeah, that doesn't look like a Salesforce thing. So once again, I'm not seeing it just by typing for this. Uh, these all look like they're specific to states or countries. So I'm not seeing it. So, okay, don't see it here either. So that's good. All right, we've done our due diligence now. We now have looked, uh, see if it's on LinkedIn. We looked on their website, don't see it. All right, cool. So who's tech systems? I probably won't do that in this video, but I, what I would do is you know read a little bit about them. Looks like here's a junior business analyst. Maybe this is what it is. Uh, that one's a week ago though, and it's for Australia. Here's that, here's that Salesforce one. I don't know, so maybe it's one of those technical oh maybe it's this one too CRM uh, once again that was Japan so you're kind of seeing here like this is the process I'm just trying to be really like this is my first time going through it so this is not scripted or anything but this is like how I research roles so I don't see it anywhere still don't see anything applying to the US uh, let's go look at Christina again where is she located let's go back to her account she's in Orlando so she is here in the US so I feel like she would have made that maybe a little more like specific in her post if it wasn't just for anybody and she doesn't say that so I, I don't see that it's saying it's specific to Japan or Australia or something like that okay cool so we've done all that the next thing I would do is I'm gonna go back to tech systems and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to people next. And I'm going to type in sales first. What this will do is it's going to bring up people that uh, do Salesforce stuff, obviously. And they tell you where they're at. Oh, I'm here in the U.S., so I'm kind of curious to see who's in the U.S. Okay, so you have all these people that now get pulled up that are Salesforce admin, Salesforce, 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 right? That's pretty cool. So you got all these Salesforce people. Hey, look, someone from Talent Stacker as well. So that's really awesome. So this might be somebody to reach out to because this is a similar program to ours where basically people that are just trying to get into the industry in Salesforce, this is the uh, program they go through that's hosted by Bradley Rice or is it similar to that. So maybe I'd reach out to Randy. But the point is here is you're going to try to find somebody that is either someone that's on the team you're going to work on or somebody that is like the gatekeeper. And what I mean by gatekeeper is somebody like the recruiter, the hiring manager, maybe your direct manager of the team, if you can find that. And I'm seeing a few of these. See, there's the recruiter. Obviously in this sense, we already know that Christina is the one. So maybe we reach out to her. I shouldn't say maybe. I would reach out to her because she posted it. And the way I would do that is to send her a message. But what I would like to do also is because she's likely going to get blown up by other people that might take the initiative to message her. I'm gonna to try to find somebody else that is you know, on my team or somebody that got in. We're gonna choose Randy. What I would do is I would connect with Randy and I'd say something like, I won't send it like this, but I would say, hey Randy, 
I saw that he worked for Tech Systems, whatever their name is. Let me hear you write this out and then I'll come back. Cool, so I got this typed out and this is just a rough draft, just kind of what came off the top of my head here, but more or less, staker, staker. What I'd like to say to Randy here is, hey, like, this is why I'm reaching out. This is kind of the other why behind it for my selfish reasons. I saw Christina post and then like trying to make some type of connection. So Randy's not like, okay, like why would I care? And it's, hey, we're trying to make this connection here, which is you were part of the talent stack program. Maybe I'm part of that. Or in other words, like I'm in that similar position. I'm trying to look for my junior admin role. And then I would send him this. I wouldn't try to go in for my ask right here. I'm not gonna try to ask Randy for a favor. I don't even know Randy. So don't even know if he's gonna accept. The point is trying to establish some type of relationship here so that he will connect with me. And then once he connects with me, I can go back and I can say, hey, thanks, I appreciate it. How have you liked working at tech? You know, blah, 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 blah. And then if it seems like a good fit after I've talked with him for a second, then I can ask and say, hey, Randy, if you don't mind, is there like a good person I can reach out to that would help me land this job? Or do you have any advice on how you were able to get a job at Tech Systems? Something like that, and that's what's really gonna supply it. What people do wrong is they say something like this. Hey, I want a job at Tech Systems. Oops. And I saw you work there. Something like that. I get those ones all the time, something like this. And it's like, Okay, don't know who you are, don't know why I need to help you, don't know like why I'm titled to have to help you because you make it seem that way. So you're really trying to avoid that kind of stuff right there. So you don't want to send it like that. All right, so I'd connect with Randy. After I connect with Randy, you can reach out, build that relationship, see if there's any advice he can help you out with. Okay, cool. And then after I've connected with Randy and maybe one other person on the team or another recruiter, then I'm going to go to Christina and I'm going to say to Christina here, hey, Christina, you know, and then let me hear you write this out. Okay, so this is more or less what I would say here. Um, so once again, it's kind of a rough draft. You could also polish this up, but uh, this gives you a general idea of what you could say. So our first paragraph. All right. So this is you got to keep in mind, Christina doesn't know us. We don't know Christina. So this is a cold DM. The first thing that you want to do when you do cold DMs is you don't want to go in straight for the ask. You don't want to make it seem salesy or pushy. You want to try to establish, once again, another type of connection or the reason, state the reason you're reaching out. In Christina's uh, situation here, she posted it. She's likely getting blown up. So you want to try to figure out how you can differentiate yourself in the messaging uh, so you don't just run together with everybody else. And you also want to establish that connection so that it seems like you've done your part to try to figure this whole situation out for her. So our first one is, you know, the reason why. We don't want to be all weird and compliment her and give her all these things and be, you know, like something that you a lot of people will do uh, is like you'd see that she's maybe in Orlando. Maybe I'm in Orlando or I love vacationing there. You know, so your first paragraph, sometimes people will go on and on about how they love Orlando and Florida and all this kind of stuff. Which, yeah, okay, that's great. But if Christina, once again, she doesn't know us, and whether or not you like this part to be true or not, like, I don't know her, she doesn't know me, I'm a male, she's a female, right? So there's also this situation that you don't wanna create where it's like, okay, why is this person like hitting me up? Why are they kind of being creepy? And why are they talking about Orlando? Like, what does that have to do with anything, right? So you don't wanna create a situation where anybody's feeling uncomfortable. So you want to definitely state the reason why right off the bat, like why we're reaching out and how we found her so that she doesn't feel that way, which is right out the gate. Hey, Christina, I came across your post, blah, 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 blah. Instead of going into something about Orlando, because I personally don't have a ton of connection with Florida, um, what I did instead is I would just say I gave her a compliment. It's important to kind of give her a compliment or establish some type of connection here um, and not just Christina, right? But just in general, like establish some type of connection or give a compliment to somebody so that they uh, feel like they're getting to know you, right? That's just relationship building one-on-one. So, hey, like really appreciate you, you know, posting this, big help for people like me, which it is, you know, that's a genuine compliment, which not a lot of people do this where they post something into the community. So that is something that is really appreciated for someone like me so that I can find this. 
Okay, cool. So now she knows why we're reaching out and we also told her thank you for doing something on her end. That's awesome. Next piece, this paragraph here. All right, so we're gonna cut to the chase. I'm not gonna go on and on and tell her all this garbage about the role. I'm gonna go right to the selling point about me, which is I'm great at automating clunky processes to increase revenue and reduce the case handle time. I have three examples of how I've done that on my portfolio I've linked for you below. Perfect plug, right? Which is you're telling her why you're a good candidate and it doesn't have to be that exactly. It could be whatever it is that you're good at. But the point is here to show you that you should get in there and give a, a solid reason, especially if it's not a recruiter and let's say it's a hiring manager or someone on the team, they know exactly how you would contribute. So it's like, hey man, like I'm really good at automating this and I have three examples why. And what we did specifically, we used keywords, automating, clunky processes, increase revenue, that's a big one for businesses, reduce case handle time, that's a big one, right? Reduce inefficiencies. And then more importantly, you don't need to believe me, you just go check out my portfolio that I've created. Sweet, and then the third paragraph. Uh, this one here is that Randy, where we're gonna pull him in. Let's say that we established a connection with Randy, this is what I would do next here. As I come in here to this paragraph and I'm gonna say something like that. I'm gonna say, hey, you know, I spoke with Randy, you know, he loves working over there. And then maybe add in a few other things that maybe Randy told me about tech systems. It's awesome. But keep it short. The point here is in the third paragraph to say, to show to Christina, like, hey, I am being proactive. I've reached out to Randy. He works there. He and I know each other. You know, we have this relationship. That's going to make her feel like, oh, okay, great. This guy knows somebody that works here. So we can already kind of vet him a little bit better. Like Randy can maybe vouch for him or not vouch for him. And more importantly, he's, he can tell he really likes this position because he's going through all these other people to try to figure out how he can get this role. So that one's important. Fourth, uh, this is where we point out the problem we saw earlier. So I went to apply, showing her that, hey, I tried to do my part here of applying for you, but I did not see it. And then this is where we want to you know, probably uh, prod like Randy or another recruiter, whoever it is that we talked to earlier, and say, hey, like, look, I tried to apply, but I didn't see it. So Randy told me that you're the best person to reach out to. If not, who is the best? And that way, it's also the same thing. Like, I want to do this. I want to make it easier. I don't want to have to ask you how to do this. But the point is, I don't see a place where I can go and apply for this thing. So where can I apply for it? And then this also prompts the person that you're messaging, in our case, Christina, to um, have to, not have to, but like give more of a response back, right? And then lastly here, uh, thanking them for their time, really appreciate looking to their response, kind of putting that cherry on top a little bit in our message to be like, hey, like, you know, we're trying to do all we can to get this job here and also would really appreciate your time back because we also know there's 202 comments, 37 shares, a lot of people liking it, so she's likely getting blown up. But this hopefully prompts her to be like, you know, really looking forward towards this. So that's something that I would send right there. Discard that. Cool. So now that's pretty much it. At that point, that's all we can really do. What this is going to do, though, is it's really going to cut through the uh, boring stuff that we saw on our end where a lot of people just got in there and just said interested, 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 right? All that stuff that doesn't really do anything for you. This instead is going to kind of cut through there and this is what I mean when I say 99% of the people that I see trying to get jobs in the Salesforce industry, they do what you just saw. And then what they're going to say is, oh, it's been tough, you know, I've been applying for jobs and like when I see a job posting, like I, I try to get on it, but like nothing really happens, I'm not able to get them, right? And it's just that same mentality where it's like, you putting interested or you actually applying for a job is like really nothing different, you know? It's the same thing with me at doing all my freelancing and stuff I'm doing right now. It's, I apply for the job, yes, but I'm doing this on a day-to-day -day basis of finding the people and trying to establish a connection to like make it worthwhile. And that is like the most important part of what you can do is trying to figure out all this marketing side of stuff. So. Anyways, hopefully that's helpful. I know this is a little bit longer than the videos I probably would like to do, but I wanted to go through it real time with you, not look at it so I could show you like my thought process of how I would like navigate this idea.